Okay, y'all can see I've chosen as our subject today the statement that God is faithful. And always remember that. He is faithful. He's going to do what he says he'll do. He's capable of doing what he says he's going to do. But let's read, if you would, on your paper, the first two scriptures, they're Genesis and Corinthians, and then we'll hold up a minute on this. The Lord visited Sarah, as the Lord had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah, as he had spoken or as he had promised. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age. Abraham was 100 years old. At the set of time which God had spoken to them. Notice at the set time, God's time, not man's time. At the set time. And in a, another scripture that I wanted to share with you was 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. When Joseph was in Potiphar's house, the Lord made a way of escape, didn't he? Joseph lost his coat when Miss Potiphar grabbed it, but he escaped, didn't he? And we're going to read a little contrary today with, uh, as we look at our scripture and what happened, what all our scripture involves. But this chapter in Genesis gives us the account of the birth of the promised son, Isaac, to Abraham and Sarah. It had been 30 years since God called him out of Ur of Chaldee. And he told him to go to a place that I'll show you and I'll give you for an everlasting possession, and that was the land of Canaan. And he promised Abraham a seed to which all nations of the earth would be blessed. Let me say that again. He promised Abraham a seed to which all nations of the earth would be blessed. And at the time the promise was given, Abraham had neither seed nor a foot of land in Canaan. He had never even seen the land, the, the land of Canaan. And God said to Abraham, go where I'm going to send you. And the land that you're going to uh, be there is an everlasting possession. And that seed, of course, that was promised, he said, seed. Now that seed is singular, not seeds. That seed was who? Jesus Christ came through the loins of Isaac that was born to Abraham. Let me say though in the beginning that God is faithful even when his children are unfaithful. God is faithful even when his children are unfaithful, now, namely Abraham shows his unfaithfulness in the scripture that we're going to read here. But through impatience, Abraham had sinned against God and became the father of the unfaithful, didn't he? And we'll get to that in a moment. Abraham became impatient. Sarah, his wife, likewise became impatient. And Abraham became fleshly. He quarreled with the Lord. And he went so far as to take things in his own hands. Even his wife 
As a matter of fact, it was Sarah that said to Abraham, God promised a child back yonder and it hadn't happened. It's not going to happen. So I'm going to take this slave woman. By the way, Hagar had no choice in it. She was strictly, as we see, drug, uh, sex trafficking uh, come through the, in our day. Basically what happened to her because she was a slave woman to Sarah. Was she not? Sarah said, Abraham, honey, I'm too old to have a child. God promises one, so we're going to take care of God's promise. I want you to take Hagar here, the slave woman, and have a child by her, and thus will be fulfilled the promise of God. Not the way God promised it, was it? He promised Sarah a child. But she took Hagar, said, Abraham, go in here and have a relationship with Hagar. She was the one that encouraged him, Abraham, now get this, she encouraged Abraham to commit, would you call it adultery? He was married, wasn't he? Or fornication. His wife was encouraging him to take this other woman. And Abraham jumped on that, didn't he? And sure enough, Hagar had a a little boy. You remember what his name was? Ishmael, who became the father of the Arab nations. So, folk, when the Arabs say that they have claimed to Abraham, they're right on, don't they? Because he was the father of Ishmael. But here was a man that was faithful and yet was unfaithful, was he not? With his wife's blessings. I shared this with you. I wasn't intended but right quick, but I'll just share this story. It wasn't part of my message. But Sarah was trying to desperately have a child. She did it the wrong way, didn't she? My only brother, who I'm real close to, he's the only one I have left. His three granddaughters. And one of them recently decided that the clock was ticking on her that she was going to be too old to have another child. She already had two. She was not married anymore. Didn't have a boyfriend. And she goes to the doctor and tells her, the doctor that I want to have a child before I get too old. The doctor said, okay, we can fix that. They tried and it didn't work. But the second time, it did work. Artificial insemination. My brother was telling me the other day that she brought the little baby over to his house to visit him and said he's like a little squirrel. <laughs> but think about it a moment. Here a kid's going to have a, a mother. Who's that kid going to, when they say, who's your parent's name, what's, what's she going to tell them? That's kind of what Sarah did in the wrong way. Now, they didn't have artificial insemination, by the way, back in those days. But here, Sarah was trying to do God's job. 
Folk, I got news for you. Some things we're not going to do that God is going to do. Some things we are incapable of doing that he is capable. But in verse 1 and 2 that we read a moment ago, we have the Holy Spirit declaration concerning the faithfulness of God. He said, God he is faithful. But we asked a question. We'd ask God, and I'm sure that Abraham asked God, How come you wait till I'm so old? Sarah was 90 years old. Way past the season of childbearing. When she had a son. God had promised that son. And along came Isaac. Now, I don't know why God waited that long other than to show the world it was still his. Folk, I got news for you. Birth at any age is still the work of God. Before we can trust God no matter what the circumstance may be, if he promised something, in the time of trouble, in the time of peace, in the time of prosperity, or in the time of poverty, we can trust God. No matter what the appearances may be, folk, you and I, would have been doubters if you say this 90-year-old lady is going to have a baby. How many of us would have kind of let that pass by? We'd say that's fake news, wouldn't we? Well, folk, it was reality with God. But we can trust him God, no matter how long the delay might be. And folks, God does things when he's ready. The Bible says that Sarah gave birth at the set time. And it was God that set the time. He did unto Sarah as he had spoken. But I'm here to tell you this morning that God is eternal. And time means nothing to him. You and I, in this flesh, are temporal. The old flesh wears out. But that spirit that God gave us, those that he made in his own image, is eternal. And it's going to exist eternally, either with God or apart from God. And we get to choose where we want to spend eternity, don't we? made possible through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that died in our place. But God is eternal and all his attributes are infinite. He has an eternity to work out his plan and purpose. You know what the Lord says about God's knowledge he said, the hairs of our heads are numbered. Think about that a moment. The hairs of our head are numbered. Amen. And not a sparrow falls without his knowledge. Amen. And he calls the stars by name. We look up into the outer space and we see all those stars glittering uh, an eternity away. And yet the Lord's named them all. Folk, nothing gets by God. Period. 
He is the great I am of Exodus. If you would, look down at Exodus there, chapter 3, verse 13. Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of our fathers hath sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. Folk, he is still the I am God. There is no other but him. He is eternal, is he not? Amen. And the eternal God does not change his program to please us. And Sarah, if she had known that, had forgotten God had spoken and said that Abraham would have a son with Sarah at the proper time. The proper time, he looked, was delayed, but nevertheless it came to pass. And folks, let's think about our own personal life and our own prayer life. The Lord said, ask and you'll receive. Meaning if we ask in his will, we would receive. The Lord doesn't always answer the prayer when we think he ought to, but he answers it at the right time. And that's why we need to pray. This should help us in our prayer life when we consider that. What a comfort to know that his program is on schedule. And folks, I've chosen to read one of my favorite verses in all the Bible, if you will, Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. All things work together, whether they be good or bad. We see all this wickedness and as Brother Ricky pointed out in Sunday school this morning, that of the generation in which we live, where that people have literally abandoned God in their own thoughts and ways of life. And folk, you can't go through life without recognizing your Creator. He put you here. And I'm here to tell you today, He put you here for a purpose. And if you don't accomplish that purpose, you can't blame him because he's given us all that we need. Amen. God has promised to save all that would come unto him, didn't he? All that would believe on his son, Jesus. And there is no promise of salvation without a personal trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the way. And folks, you see so many today. You ask them, are you going to heaven? Their response? Well, then Ricky, tell them what they say. I'm trying. Doing the best I can. Well, folks, the Lord said we're sinners. All of us. The best we can is still... Short, isn't it? Meaning you can't be good enough to get to heaven. Your sins have to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. And I'm here to tell you, if you put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, it's said and done. The blood's already been shed. It's been shed for 2,000 years almost. That covers our sins. But so many today are trying to still earn 
earned their way into heaven. It can't be done. But I'm going to ask you the question. Have you ever known anyone that believed and were not saved? No, it doesn't happen. God is faithful in his promise of help in the time of temptation. We just read that a moment ago. Let's read it again. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Man tempted, didn't he? But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able. Never forget that. What does temptation mean? Called to do evil. Uh, called to do evil. And the Bible says God tempts no man. Am I right? God tempts no man, but he tries all of us. But with every temptation, we just read there is a way of escape. God is faithful in his promise to never leave us nor forsake us. Now, folk, I like this last verse. If you're on your page, if you look at the last verse. Let your conversation be without covetousness. Be with content with such things as you have. For he has said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. Let that soak in a moment. I'll never leave thee, nor forsake thee. David the psalmist said he'd never seen people, the children of God, begging for bread or go hungry. Because the Lord takes care of those things, doesn't he? And I'm going to close on the, the note. God is faithful, and he wants all men to come unto him. That's why he said, he said, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly of heart. Folk, that invitation is universal. The Lord said, whosoever will, let him come and take of the water of life freely. The water of life. He is the water of life. He is a source of life. And he bids you come and take of him. If you'll do that this morning, right where you are, simply say in your heart, God, I know I'm a sinner. And I'm trusting your promise that you gave your son to die in my place. And I'm accepting your son. And folk, the moment you do that, you'll be changed forever. And the devil can never take away that time that you claim Jesus as your Savior.